Today we start the last week of lectures. Today is lecture 10-1 on complex power and power calculations. This is section 9.4 in your text. At the conclusion of today's lecture, a student should be able to write three form the formulas for complex and apparent power, be able to briefly and clearly explain complex and apparent power, and be able to analyze a circuit to calculate the complex and a power, apparent power, and be able to use a power triangle. Complex power is the complex sum of the real and reactive power, and it's S equals P plus JQ measured in volt amperes. Complex power can be computed from the voltage and current phasors for a circuit, and the magnitude of the complex power is the apparent power, which is the square root of P squared plus Q squared, and it also has units of volt amperes. The following figure shows the geometric relationship between complex power, the power factor, and impedance, and it's called the power triangle. Notice that the real part is P and the imaginary part is Q. If it's positive, it's an inductive and you have a lagging power factor. If it's negative, you have a capacitive load and it has a leading power factor and Q is less than zero. And the hypotenuse of these right triangles is the apparent power, which we typically show with a magnitude symbol. You can relate this to the impedance triangle that we talked about last lecture, and that's shown here. Note that for the impedance triangle, the real part is the resistance, the imaginary part is the reactance, and the hypotenuse is the magnitude of Z. Just like before, if X is positive, it's an inductor. If X is negative, it's a capacitor, although we've only shown the positive on this one. The relationship between the reactive and real power is, as we see here, theta is equal to the arctangent of Q over P or the arctangent of X over R, and the, that's the power factor angle, and the power factor is the cosine of that angle. The apparent power requirement of a device designed to convert electric energy to non-electric energy is actually more important than the average power requirement. Average power represents the useful output of the energy converting device, but the apparent power represents the volt amp capacity required to supply the average power. Since we know that we can express a phasor using RMS or magnitude values, this gives us several formulas we can use to find the complex power, including S equals VRMS IRMS conjugate, or the one half VM times IM conjugate, or the magnitude of VRMS squared divided by Z, or P plus JQ. For average power, we can use the magnitude of IRMS squared times R, which we used last lecture, or 1 half IM squared times R. Or for Q, we could use the magnitude of IRMR, IRMS squared times X, or 1 half IM squared times X. If Z is a purely resistive element, then the complex power simplifies to just average power equal to VRMS squared over R. And if Z is a purely reactive element, such as an inductor or capacitor, then the complex power becomes Q equals VRMS squared over X. Okay, let's do an example. A relay coil is connected to a 210 volt RMS 50 hertz supply. If it has a resistance of 30 ohms and an inductance of 0.5 Henry, calculate the apparent power supply to the coil. First, I'll draw this circuit in the time domain, and then we'll convert it to the phasor domain. So in the time domain, I have a voltage source, 210 volts, RMS at 50 hertz, and here is the 30 ohm resistor in series with the 0 0.5 Henry inductor. Omega is equal to 2 pi 50 radians per second, so this circuit in the phasor domain would be 210 with an angle of 0 degrees, and that's volts RMS. The resistor is still 30 ohms, and now the impedance of the inductor is J 2 pi 50 times 0 0.5. So if I want to find the apparent power, the first thing I need to do is to find the current, I. So I is equal to voltage divided by impedance, or 210 with an angle of 0 degrees, divided by 30 plus J pi 50, which is 
313 with an angle of negative 79 degrees, and that would be amps, RMS. So the complex power S is VI conjugate, or 210 times 1.313 with an angle of positive 79 degrees because it's the conjugate, which is 275.73 with an angle of 79 degrees and the units are volt amperes. So the apparent power is the magnitude of the complex power or this magnitude here. So that's 275.73 volts amperes. Okay, let's try another example. For the following circuit, if the current is 10 with an angle of 25 degrees, and notice this is not an RMS value, what is the total apparent power supplied by the circuit? What is the power factor of the circuit? So S would be equal to 1 half times V, 120 with an angle of 30 degrees, times the conjugate of the current, 10 with an angle of negative 25 degrees. Notice this 1 half is now here because these are magnitudes. So this is VM and IM instead of RMS. So the complex power is 600 with an angle of five degrees, and that is volt amperes. So the apparent power would be 600 volt amperes. So now let's find the power factor. The power factor angle is five degrees. So the power factor is the cosine of five degrees, which is 0 0.996. Remember, you always must put either lagging or leading. Since my angle is greater than zero, that would be lagging. Okay, let's try another example. For the following circuit, if device A receives two kilowatts at 0 0.8 power factor lagging, device B receives three kVA at 0 0.4 power factor lagging, while device C is inductive and consumes one kilowatt and receives 500 VAR, determine the power factor of the entire system. This requires us to use the power triangle. And we're going to do this for each of the loads. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to summarize the key information. We have a load A where P is equal to two kilowatts. We have a 0 0.8 power factor lagging. So theta, is the arc cosine of 0 0.8, which is 36.86 degrees. Notice the reason I know this is a positive angle is because of the lagging. Otherwise, it would be negative. Part B, I have A, and this is the apparent power, is equal to 3 kVA. And this is 0 0.4 power factor leading. So theta would be the arc cosine of 0 0.4, which is negative 66.42 degrees because it's leading. And C is equal to P equal to one kilowatt and Q is equal to 500 VAR. Since I know it's an inductive load, I know that Q is greater than zero. So if I want to determine the power factor of the entire system, I need to first determine the complex power for the entire system. So let's draw the power triangle for load A. For load A, I know that the power, the average power is two kilowatts, and I know that this angle is 36.86 degrees. And what I want is Q. So if you think about trigonometric relationships, that's the tangent. So the tangent of 36.86 degrees is equal to QA over two kilowatts. So QA is equal to 1.5 K bar. Now let's do load B. So I'm looking for P and Q. So I'm going to label PB, QB, and I know that the apparent power, which is the hypotenuse, is three kVA, and that the angle is negative 66.42 degrees. So the relationship between PBE 
and the apparent power is actually the cosine. So what I would have is that the cosine of negative 66.42 degrees is PB over 3 kVA. So PB is 1.2 kilowatts. The relationship between QB and the apparent power is the sine. So I would have the sine of negative 66.42 degrees, which is QB over 3 kVA. And from that, I get that QB is negative 2.75 kVA. So now, the total apparent power for the load and the total complex power for the load would be PA plus PB plus PC plus J times QA plus QB plus QC, which is equal to 2 plus 1.2 plus 1. plus J times 1.5 minus 2.75 plus 0 0.5, which yields 4.2 minus J 0 0.75 kVA. So that's the rectangular form, an angle notation or polar notation that would be 4.266 with an angle of negative 10 degrees kVA. So the power factor is the cosine of negative 10 degrees, which is equal to 0 0.985 leading. And now for our final example in today's lecture. Given the voltage and given the complex power, let's find the current. Recall that the complex power is equal to V RMS I RMS conjugate. So since we know the voltage and we know the complex power, we can find the current. So the complex power is 4.266 with an angle of negative 10 degrees kVA. And this is equal to 120 with an angle of 45 degrees times IRMS conjugate. So IRMS conjugate is equal to 4.266 with an angle of negative 10 degrees K divided by 120 with an angle of 45 degrees. And you would take the conjugate of that answer, and finally you would get that the current is 35.55 with an angle of 55 degrees, and that's amps RMS. This concludes today's lecture on complex power, apparent power, and the power factor in the power triangle.